All right, we're ready. We're a little, we're uh, we're all bibled up. Everybody got the Bibles in here. We were about we were we were bibled short for a little bit there. Um, Max sends his best. He couldn't make it. Uh, I saw Greg. Oh, Greg. Greg. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, I can see him. There you go. I knew Greg was here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's the closest one that's ever <laughs> <laughs> I, I needed that. I needed a, that here. Uh, so, yeah. Um, You're so used to. <laughs> I know. So used to Mac being here, right there. So, um, okay. And uh, and uh, it's good to see everybody. We're going to begin with our song, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Call it our hymn of praise. It's a hymn of praise this morning. And we are going to. Um, uh, sing together just a couple verses. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Grace Um, I do want to share with you that um, we know Gene Duncan's uh, service information now. It's going to be December 4th at 11. Uh, that's a Saturday at, at the church. So December 4th at 11. We're going to send a phone tree out with that. And I'm sorry to bring the news to those who haven't heard yet, but uh, Dorothy uh, Harker passed away yesterday. So um, she... Uh, um, yeah, she she passed, and um, we uh, you know, uh, fondly remember her so much. And she, uh, Richard, you know, was faithfully by her side uh, every chance he could. And, and she taught at the preschool. She taught the preschool a long time. Uh, so we're just uh, we're just sorry about that. But the arrangements have not been uh, finalized yet. So uh, so please keep them all in your prayers. Any other prayers that we want to lift up? Sarah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, my brother-in-law uh, lost another brother this week, yesterday. The cancer. It's just two in the last two weeks. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Sarah's brother-in-law lost two brothers in law. In laws. Yeah. In laws uh, in two weeks. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Ray Brown. Patty and Bill. Ray Brown. Absolutely. Um, yes, let's uh, pray for Patty and Milton. Uh, uh, Patty is now sharing that she um, has uh, cancer, and um, and it's a uh, they. Well, Milton just calls it a female cancer, and uh, but there's a, a treatment plan. Uh, it's going to involve Greenville and um, and some and some uh, doctors uh, around the area, and uh, so we're going to start that journey with Patty. So, um, what other prayers do the do you have? Is uh, Chuck Chuck Lewis is under the weather. Chuck Lewis is sick. We miss our Chuck. Uh, Doug, uh, 
survived a fall um, and um, a bad fall at uh, on Saturday, Saturday's Run like for Grace for Recovery. Fall. And uh, he's, he's, uh, we're glad though that Doug got checked out and there was no uh, concussion or anything. So no broken bones. No broken bones. So, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, Doug, we're really grateful uh, that you're doing well. I, mean, I know you are. That's super. Any others uh, that the you want? The Blood Mobile. Blood Mobile. The Blood Mobile. That's right. Goodness, that's coming up. The family of Elmo Barnes. Family of Elmo Barnes. Yeah. Yes. And the family of Tom Davis. Family yeah, of Tom, Tom Davis. Davis. And uh, Betty Peterson's having something done to her heart and her pacemaker tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and then A.J. Carr is at Duke today getting fitted for a mask for his radiation okay. trip. For AJ Carr uh, and for Betty Peterson, um, uh, Betty has something with her heart. Uh, pacemaker. And uh, yes, Gail. Uh, well, I have a place. Please. On a new is a lot better. She had an infection and was on an antibiotic, and now she is greatly improved. Oh, well, that's so, great. Thanks for the prayers. Absolutely. Didn't have to go to the hospital this for this no. one, so that's great. That's and great. see, we just prayed her for her just two minutes we ago. We did. We prayed upstairs, and Kenny, uh, Ken reminded us about that, so and asked us to pray. Well, I like praise the fact that Lee Helen was in church on Sunday. Yes, with, that's right. You with know, Lee Helen and everything, you know. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, yeah. so glad to see him. Carolyn and Lee uh, called me last week and said, you know, what's the is there a status and I said we talked about the elevator and the big men's bathroom now and the whole thing and they said well we can we think we can do it so Lee Heller was in uh, service. He could, start, he could start coming to the reach out class again. <laughs> maybe maybe so uh, uh, that was that was really great that was really great thanks for mentioning that yeah yeah um, <clears throat> Okay. Well, it was go. good to see the choir. And the choir was singing. Amen. That's that. that great. Wow. That was super. In full voice. <laughs> I know. And there was still some that uh, are that were out of town that will be coming in there too. And uh, so. okay, let's go to God together. We we praise you, O God, for these uh, many blessings, but we also pray for the families uh, who have lost and are grieving. We ask your uh, your grace and peace to be upon them. Um, we ask that uh, that you would be with those who have uh, medical needs, and we're thankful for those who have uh, come through uh, ordeals and uh, for their strength and their health. Uh, all of them we lift to you, knowing that you know them in your heart. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, today um, we are on the second lesson on peacemaking. So we've been studying, we studied peacemaking last week by studying an Old Testament um, passage in which there was a lot of bloodshed. And uh, we talked about that whole Old Testament um, uh, thing of, you know, there's of, uh, what is war and peace and what's going on there. Uh, difficult, difficult things. But today we turn to Jesus' words and particularly, um, Matthew 5, and I'm going to throw in Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And then we're going to look, we're also going to throw it together with that. 38, Matthew 5, 38 through uh, 48. Okay? Uh, particularly, uh, well, actually all of it. So 38 through 48. Would, uh, Anybody, uh, John, would you read 38 through 42? And then Sterling, would you read 43 through 48? So 38 through 42? Yes, please. Okay. This is Matthew 5. Uh, you, have, you, have heard, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist one who is evil, but if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your coat, let him have your cloak as well. 
And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to him who begs from you, and do not refuse him who would borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully abuse you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes this sunrise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, reward oh, I'm sorry, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do you do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we have here uh, some of Jesus's specific teachings about peacemaking. Peacemaking, and it begins with. Uh, two sections, both sections begin with, 38 and 43 begin with, you have heard it said, but I say to you. Now, when, whenever that you see that, that's a clue that he's going to reference uh, the law, and then he's going to tell you a different way that he wants to, you to read or interpret the law. So the first one was, you have heard it said, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Um, and we're going to start there because that uh, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth is found in, in three places. And, and one of them I'm just going to turn back to. Um, if, you're, if you're someone who likes to uh, take a lot of notes, the other places are, the places are Exodus 21, 24 and Leviticus 24, 20 and Deuteronomy 19, 21. But um, Exodus 21, 24 says, uh, if harm follows, then you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. What was the beginning, if what? Yeah. If any harm follows, it's, it comes it's after, when it comes in a section when two people are fighting and injure a pregnant woman, so there's a miscarriage. Um, okay. So, but in the other two places, it's also very similar, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. And it says life for life, which means capital punishment for murder. Um, so, Jesus quotes these in the law. Um, first of all, initial reflections, you know, on what do you think it means um, in uh, this this retrib retributive justice. I'm trying to say it right. Retributive justice. This this uh, one for one. What what do you um, find? What do you feel like God is doing with that? What do you think God is? Why do you think God put that in the law? Just, just there's no right or wrong answer. Just speculations, thoughts. Anna, I see Anna coming off mute. Anna, did you have an idea? If I come off mute, that means I'm supposed to talk. Mm. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> um, I, I continue. You know, I told you when I, I started it attending these sessions that I probably was the, the one in the church that might need them the most because after all of these years of going to church, especially as a, as a small, every Sunday until I went to college, let me tell you, mother had us at church. I clearly was asleep <laughs> or was daydreaming because I, I, I know so little about the Bible. It is, I, and the older I get, the more I realize I really need to learn. 
Mm -hmm. so, so here I am. Here you are. So I, I, I feel like I don't have a whole lot to contribute, but the first thing I thought of here was um, the God that I believe in, which is the God of kindness and forgiveness. And I couldn't help but think back to a time when uh, Meredith was in middle school. And under the best of circumstances, middle school is really tough. And there, I want to say a little girl, but these little girls are not little. I mean, they're, you know, they're as big as an adult by the time they're in middle school. And Meredith had this ink pen that we got, we got like four in a package at Staples. And you, but you could erase the ink. Yeah, I remember those, Erase, yeah, erasable they ink pens. Yeah. yeah. They were kind of new. <laughs> and another girl in her class would take this pen from her every day. Mm. and wouldn't give it back. <clears throat> mm. I mean, we just flat take the pen and wouldn't give it back. And so she came home and she told me about it. And I said, well, honey, you know, don't worry about zinc. It. It's a pen. The next day she did the same thing. Well, I'm thinking, oh man, this is one of those teachable moments and I'm going to blow it. Um, but I had to go to the grocery store anyway, so I ran over to Staples and I got a whole package of brand new pens. I brought it back home and that night, after Meredith had done her homework and everything, I talked to her about it. I said, Meredith, tomorrow, now I know the name of this little girl. I said, but and I know her mother. And I said, Meredith, when you go to school tomorrow, you give this brand new pack of pens to her and see if that way work things out. Hmm. And she did. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, yeah, this, I, <laughs> yeah. this is what I'm, I'm trying to do the right thing. And right. I'm thinking, you know, Meredith's going to get beat up tomorrow in school. <laughs> right. Anyway, and the little girl thanked her, the girl thanked her and never bothered Meredith again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Can, can you kind of paraphrase that? I didn't yeah. hear much of it. Yeah, um, uh, just to, to uh, repeat in case you couldn't hear, um, there was, uh, uh, Meredith was, uh, Anna's- Was in middle school. Was in middle and school. middle school. And uh, uh, another girl kept uh, taking her pen every day. And so, um, Anna went out and got a bag of pins and they gave it to the girl and then, you know, they, yeah, I, I, okay. I went out and gave, and gave, I got a, like a, another container of like four pins, brand spanking new, gave it to Meredith and Meredith gave her gave the whole container the, the next container. day in school. Yeah. And yeah. that smoothed everything out. It does. You know, that sounds like <laughs> the, um, the, the one, uh, in Matthew, uh, five 38, not just the stripe, not just turning the cheek, but if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you. Do not refuse anyone who borrow from you. So yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'll be, I'll be honest. Really, I was sweating it. I was yeah, sweating it. I bet. I didn't know how it was. If, you know how it was really going to turn out. Right. And um, I think I was thank. I was relieved. Right. Um, and I think it taught Meredith a really valuable lesson. I'm sure it did. Absolutely. It's still, that'll still preach. I might have to use that one day. Yeah, that's a good story. Well, I, it's true. It's true. What are you saying? My stories aren't true? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Preacher stories, but you know. Meredith, we, yeah. Yeah. Meredith, um, <clears throat> did not get, Meredith was smaller, physically smaller than this girl. Yeah. This was kind of a large girl. Yeah. Um, taller. Yeah. And uh, I think Meredith was really. Meredith had, I mean, it's a, it's a, well, on the one hand, it's nothing, it's an ink pen. But Meredith yeah. had never anticipated, never come across anybody treating her like this. It's a good lesson. It's a really good lesson to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do y'all think about the eye for eye, tooth for tooth? How, how was it sat with you? Have you? Horrible. Sorry? Awful. Awful. <laughs> but I also awful. think that we're still using it today in uh -huh. a lot of respects. Yeah. It's human um, behavior. You know, it's returning yeah. what you receive. That's right. That's yeah. Why yeah. Kind of like, if you're going to hurt, hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. Kind of like, if you're going to hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. Right. But why? Why is it there? That's, why is it that's there? the question you asked, and I yeah. don't know. Well, well that's, why, that's yeah. why Jesus said what he said. Well, <laughs> Matthew. Yeah, we are going to talk about it. Uh, and revenge runs yeah. into that. Uh, uh, what I was saying is it's hard, it's hard to fight a war like that. Right, right, absolutely. We're not, and I wasn't trained for that. Well, I was trained for that, exactly. And then revenge comes in. 
Yeah, what do you do about revenge? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Sarah? I was telling people justify their actions by uh, they by saying, saying an eye for an eye, yeah. and then they'll justify it. You know, he hit me first, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's very much like uh, preschool boys. Yeah, okay? yeah. <laughs> and that's what the Old Testament reminds me of sometimes. It's like maybe we needed that kind of justice then. I can't understand. I really don't understand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I see the Old Testament as a time of preparation. John says he sees the Old Testament as a time of preparation. I just want to make and, sure. That. And even now, I mean, so you need sometimes the, what appears to be harsh rules. Uh, but I think in preparation for the coming of Jesus yeah. is, is the contrast because our human nature, which I mean, God created us and, and gave us freedom. Uh, and we know what happened in the Garden of Eden. Uh, and he laid down those rules because he knew we, we needed them. Um, and still, I think our default setting is an eye for an eye. I mean, tip for tat, you kill my dog, I kill your cat. Um, but the contrast of, of the love of Jesus Christ, that, I, that's, that Old Testament, the harshness of the Old Testament, it is a backdrop that creates a true contrast of the love of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. which is still hard for us to, to act in that manner, to to give pins to a kid who's been taking our pins, or to mm -hmm. give a, to give our cloak when somebody's mm -hmm. taking our, our shirt. I mean, that's the shirt that's, off from your back. <laughs> that is not our default set. Now, he to say, no, it is. Right. right, right. No, you're right. You're right. Well, Kind of uh, along with that too. I mean, raising children. Um, you know, there's there's a time to make peace and a time to make war, and you have to understand the difference. And I think uh, in my life, many folks have interpreted my kindness for weakness, uh, especially in the corporate world. Mm. And that certainly is not true for me. Yeah. Just because I'm kind does not make I'm weak. Is the corporate world is more eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Huh? Dog eat dog. Dog eat dog. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so, yeah. Let's pull. Let's pull together these different strains um, that we've that we've shared because they all have grains. Oh, I, I bet all of us have heard something in some in something someone else said that's a grain of truth but we've also wrestled and said well you know you can't you can't run can you run the world like that can you run uh, the you know national affairs can you run a, a, a parent child you know a school like that I mean how do you teachers some of you are educators and that kind of thing um, what we might need to read about the law of eye for eye tooth for tooth etc is the original context and that's something some of you were talking about too god was establishing a covenant community with the israelites <clears throat> who have escaped egypt and they're and they're on their way to the promised land when he gives them these laws now consider that the function of these retributive laws actually reduced bloodshed among the covenant among israelites in the wilderness because it limited the extent of the retribution. You see? What? You no. follow me now? No. <laughs> okay. If 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 you kill my ox, then without this law, I for I two for two, then I could go kill your ox and your sheep. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. But this law says I can only kill your ox. We can or only if kind of like to put it in the there. If you have a dog and you kill his dog, kill your dog, you could go. <clears throat> yeah, but this law s stops you at retributive justice. Now, when now that we've heard Jesus talk about this non-retributive justice, this uh, this overwhelming love, of course we're 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 also drawn there. But let's just remember that this was this was a cap. This was a a law that that put a cap on what people could do to each other. Um, tribe against tribe and that kind of thing 
Um, this was preferable over the whole anything goes Wild West, Hatfields and McCoys, whatever you want to call it, of doing things. This tit for tat justice system made it illegal to one up your attacker. It didn't allow for violence or retribution to go beyond the initial offense. So, in that context, there it, it begins to kind of make it begins to 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 make a little more sense. Is everybody with me on yeah, that? Okay. That makes sense. I okay. never thought of that. So we who have read Jesus' counter to this must resist the temptation to think that the Old Testament law was just barbaric and antiquated. Jesus comes with a new code, but he said earlier that he comes to fulfill the law, not to abolish it. Um, what started as an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, becomes in Jesus' teaching, turn the other cheek and love your enemies. This was a change in the law and a diversion from this law of retribution. Jesus' teaching here is meant to break the cycles of violence that hold a lot of our system together. Um, so, at the same time that we can see how the Old Testament law made sense, now Jesus introduces us in a new interpretation and, and a new ethic. And his ethic is harder for us to follow than the Old Testament ethic. Don't you imagine, you know, sometimes we, sometimes we just assume that Jesus came along and made it easier because turning the other cheek is, uh, and, you know, walking the second mile is, at first sounds like giving in, but it's actually harder to do what he's calling for than it is to do an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. So it's really not, Jesus came along and made things easier. Jesus came along and kind of made it harder. Do, do you if think, you think about it. Do you think too, I mean, what occurs to me is what Jesus said elevates the human person because, um, you know, it's one thing to kill an ox because they killed my ox, but if I'm going to take your hand because my hand got hurt when you did something, I mean, you know, the, the, the person themselves in, in Jesus's um, way of doing it becomes more um, I don't know, more elevated, mm -hmm. more, more protected, more cherished. Yeah. 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 Whereas before it was not. I mean, yeah. 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 This um, attributive this re re retributive violence um, it's, it's, it's something that uh, is where you do, you know, unto, if, in, a, in the bad way, you do unto others as they've done to you. It, that's, that's usually interpreted as a good thing, right? Do unto others uh, how you would have them do unto you. But this eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth is, is doing unto others the way they've done to you. Um, but Jesus then goes to, uh, to say that um, things are uh, more, more stringent than, he first, than, than the law first says. Um, you shall not murder in another place becomes, uh, if you say you fool, you'll be liable to the hell of fire. You know, in other words, he doesn't just say, uh, and if you see someone uh, uh, then um, and with, with a lustful eye you're to gouge out your eye if you steal something you're to cut but in those things that Jesus says you're supposed to do that to yourself now of course that's a that's a whole other subject of like what do you do with these extremely uh, these 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 extremely um, stringent rules that Jesus this ethic that Jesus comes about with. But the thing is, he doesn't expect less of us, he expects more. Um, wouldn't it be harder to uh, not just do, not do eye for eye, tooth for tooth, but to go even further and love your enemy? Wouldn't that be even harder than to just break the retributive violence cycle? 
right? He expects us to, to turn the other cheek. That's an intensification of the law. Jesus uh, holds his followers to a higher standard than the tax collectors and the Gentiles who love those who love them and greet only their brothers and sisters. So how are some of Jesus's ways harder than the Old Testament law? And some of, do you all think, how are some of Jesus's ways harder than the Old Testament law? Definitely counter to our sin nature. Yeah. Yeah. That we want to hurt the other person. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Causing them, causing pain. Right. It's counter to our to our human nature. That eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, when you return the same action that you perceive, the person that's receiving that, it kind of sets into motion a continual. Uh, reaction. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you take Jesus's course of action, you're more or less diffusing mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. uh, the continued retribution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. In trying to uh, love your enemies, um, I'm afraid what I do a lot of times is avoid them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because then I'm not hating them, but I'm not loving them. I'm avoiding them. <laughs> Can I repeat that? Yeah. <laughs> Pam, that's what I do. That's what I do. Yeah. Pam said instead of instead of loving our enemies, sometimes I sometimes I just try to avoid them, and um, <laughs> I think we can all relate. Uh, we can. Uh, that's <laughs> we can all relate. Taylor, this it takes two to fight. Taylor. <laughs> yes. Hey, this Gail. is like the um, the passive resistance is what we need here, right? Just that we we are not we're, we're we're not acting on the responding in the same way as we would in the Old Testament like you said. But this is also um, the movement that have has uh, been the theme of a lot of right people that are seeking certain rights, like civil rights. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was the big thing. It was a passive resistance um, when Martin Luther King was establishing this concept it was really difficult and they actually had to have they had courses in, in different towns they would have people to come and teach them that when somebody throws you know a, a glass of tea on your hand head that you are not to get up and respond violently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're supposed to just take it mm-hmm and by that way, you you disarm the person that is doing eventually. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it could be it could be dangerous. I, I think it mm -hmm. could be fatal. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a really brave person, I think, to do that. Right. Um, you know, I'm like Pam. Hey, my my reaction is avoidance more than I mean. I'm if someone doesn't like me. You know, I don't know that I can make people like me, and so because they have their own ideas, um, so I just I feel better staying out of their way. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna seek revenge on them because they don't like me. I just will avoid them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is this concept is is very challenging to us, I think. Yeah. And, and what and and <laughs> when you put it in today's concepts of violence it's it's really it, it is super challenging it is. and um, so our, our laws I, I don't know that our laws reflect that our right. you know, our civilian laws that we, we do seek you know punishment or retribution for people who do bad things right uh, or what we consider bad things yeah but so you know I don't know to me I feel like that Jesus is speaking to the individual as opposed to the to the larger uh, governmental group here. Some uh, some have felt opinion? that well, some have felt that way, but some have felt that he was speaking to everybody in the larger group. And so there are um, traditions of um, of uh, in in the Christian faith that practice um, pacifism. 
and you guys have heard of this Christian pacifism. Um, most people are most familiar with it in terms of conscientious objection. You know, this uh, people saying I have a religious objection to going to war or something like that. But long before that, there was this Christian pacifism. And Christian pacifists point to passages like this one uh, and, and say that this is the justification they have for uh, saying that they would not participate in war and that war is not of, of uh, that, that God does not look kindly on war. Um, the Church of the Brethren, you may have heard of them, um, or uh, the Mennonites. Yeah, Mennonites. Mennonites. Uh, we've known some Mennonites have come and done work uh, here, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Quakers and Amish, they fall under this too. Um, they put pacifism as the center of their life and practice, um, so much that they will you know, refuse to be in, uh, in military service. So Jesus' teachings really present us with challenges. Um, we, you know, how do we keep um, people safe in church? And that's been, you know, that's been a, a hard thing for us to, to try to, and we're so grateful for our um, security uh, folks who, who put the focus on prevention rather than on retribution or something like that. Yeah. Uh, this, this passage is very challenging to me with my history of abuse as a child. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, to love my enemy is to really uh, yeah. very difficult for me. Absolutely, Sarah. I have to struggle with it day by day. I'm sure. I'm sure you do. That's yes. And, a lot and, of people in our world have, you know, right. children have experienced the same. And Absolutely. This issue of eye for eye or this Christian path, pacifism. Pacifism, yeah. It is just, make, it makes things mess. <laughs> it does, it does. Um, it brings on a lot of guilt if you don't. Yeah, in, in some, uh, uh, in some smaller, I want to say, I want to say cults, but you know, uh, groups of, of uh, Christians and small groups uh, have have used these words to um, uh, overlook uh, abuse or to uh, or to avoid dealing with abuse. Uh, you know, well, Jesus said, "Love your enemies." So, you know, I'm sorry that's happened to you, but you know, this is what your Jesus said, and uh, and they use the stuff out of Paul, you know, to to especially against women, uh, about to, to tell women to go back into um, a, abusive relationships and things. So, um, yeah, we, we definitely got to, we got to know what Jesus would have been okay with and what he wouldn't have been okay with. Well, isn't there, I mean, there's a difference in, isn't there, um, I'm asking, yeah. <laughs> between justice and loving and making right peace. so right. you can have both it's not like they're they they don't have to be mutually exclusive yeah 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 which is what you would want right yeah yeah i think you're right but yeah this none of this should be used to condone abuse um for sure thank you for thank you for bringing up that very important point what about this trial that's going on this young man that, that ran away from these guys and all of a sudden, these guys chased him down, put a gun in his head, and somebody shot, shoots and kills him. I have should, he, should, he, should he just yeah. go, well, just go ahead and shoot me or, or whatever, you know? Mm. you got to make a split decision. Mm. You know, you save your life or take this guy out. Yeah. And, and it becomes complicated when you, when you talk about um, how do you uh, care for, how do you care or love others uh, if you, do you allow them to be in danger, or do you prevent them from being in danger? Uh, 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 so there's the, you know, that, that kind of uh, that kind of dichotomy is there. So yeah, those are good. Those are hard questions, and and it would be it'd be great if Jesus kind of said, now if somebody comes in your house with a gun, you can shoot them or you can't shoot them or something. Like that. <laughs> but he didn't he didn't get that specific, did he? And they didn't have guns to. Uh, They're like saying, if something comes in and it's going to shoot you. I mean, you got to make a decision. You can turn cheek, but he's still going to shoot you, or are you, you going to shoot yeah. him? And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to shoot him. 
I hear you. I'm dragging what I'm going to do. I hear you. Shoot first ask questions later. I ain't going to be well, turning the other cheek. You can get that. I hear you. I hear you. Just so folks don't think that everything is um, always um, turn the other cheek and love, etc. out here on the farm at my house, that when the kids were at home and they were in elementary school, and uh, there had been a little dust up, they were going to the tiller school. And there had been a little dust up on the playground. So my kids were not involved. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's a wonder. But it's, um, anyway, we had to, we talked about it. We had to talk about it. We talked about it. So Keith was involved on this one. And Keith was talking about what would you do if someone hit you on the playground. And the best thing to do is to not react, not hit back, you know, those kinds of things. And so Elliot says, well, Dad, what if somebody hits Mary? Mm -hmm. And Keith said, you hit it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. What if somebody hits my sister? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the, she hit back. These are yeah. tough yeah. questions. So what do we do with, uh, and, and, and uh, what do we do with these tough questions? Um, perhaps the most important most informative answer we have in the Bible is what Jesus did with his own life. I guess we can look at what he said, but at some point we have to look at what he did, too. And he talked about, of course, the love of neighbors and love of enemies. But his most poignant example was the cross. The cross was where he practiced what he preached and he lived what he taught. Um, the nails, the beatings, the crown of thorns, the mockery, the piercing in the side, all the rest he suffered at the hands of, um, <coughs> you know, an eye for an eye. And, well, actually, not even that. Because he didn't take anybody's eye. No, did he? no. <laughs> but he did not inflict harm on any of his persecutors. Well, it's probably he couldn't. That's why. But he... But he, well, if he, if he could, he might have done it. <laughs> well, you know he, what I mean. But, he, he, but he if he's all, but if he was all powerful, I think he chose not to inflict pain on them. You know, he cursed a fig tree until it withered and died. Um, he he had the power to. I mean, he could call down a legion of angels yeah, to come and yeah, yeah. And I think he chose the cross. I don't think he just. I don't think he was just a like. Um, I don't think he was that it was just like he. Like it was his his destiny, and and uh, he was a, a puppet or something. I, I know you're not saying that, but I think he chose the cross. Well, he sure wrestled with it in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, yeah, he did. It he wasn't did. an easy thing for him. You know? Right, right. He would have much rather had the cup removed from him. Right. He wanted wanted to have the cup removed. Right. He he didn't want to have to go through it. So, I'm not saying that answers all our questions. I'm not saying that you know. How, how that we aren't still going to have tension, but he he practiced this nonviolent love. Um, he loved his repentant neighbor on the cross. You know, so the, the man on the cross next to him said uh, uh, he was sorry and asked, you know, will you remember me in your kingdom? And even from the cross, he for, he forgave that man and said, you'll be with me in paradise. And then he looked on those who were persecuting him and said, they forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. Um, I guess I just have to be left at the cross, and, and I, I don't have all the answers to every hypothetical question, but I have to, I, I just have to be left at the cross and have to figure out what that means. Um, Jesus shows an example of this new code. Does his teaching seem impossible? Do his expectations seem unreasonable? Um, uh, he did also say that what is impossible for mortals is possible with God. Uh, he didn't speak of this idealistic utopia where everything's going to be okay. But I think he calls us forth to new ways of loving and peacemaking. So I think at least, even if we don't know what we do in every situation and every hypothetical, at least we have him teaching us he, he taught us what he taught us, which is worth gold, more than gold, right? And then um, we can see how it was a uh, change from what it was in the Old Testament. Uh, but the Old Testament had its reason, too. And uh, he calls us to this other kind of uh, 
living. I, I think that's about all I, you know, again, I don't have all the answers. I, I don't know what I do in every situation, but, um, but I, I just I, have to wrestle with that. I have a question because I don't understand when it says, let's see, this says 45, I guess, um, um, for he makes his, the sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. So what is he trying to tell us there that, um, you know, to be to turn the other cheek to everyone, whether they are, are done something bad to you or not. Part of the reason for that is because God's love includes everyone. Right. Is that, what that God means? loves the just and the unjust, the the righteous and the unrighteous. So God loves the one who hits you. Well, the, the rain coming down on on the evil and the good. It's just hard for me to understand. I don't think place. the rain is symbolic of anything. Okay. I think the rain is just, it means um, the, just like the sun. He makes the sun rise and set on him. He makes the rain fall on him. So the, in, other, in other words, if you're evil or you're good, what's the same? God's love? You should love You should love what he says at the beginning in 44. You should love the, the, your enemy and pray for the, those who persecute you. Because... Um, because he makes the rain and the sun uh, come on them just as much as you, you know, he uh, loves them as much as he loves you. Yeah. He also makes the Holy Spirit available to everybody just like the rain and the sun. Right, right. And I think if you had that Holy Spirit, it's probably easier to follow t Jesus' teaching right. in terms of, you know, turning the other cheek and all of yeah. that sort of thing yeah. through the guidance of the Spirit rather than the human emotion. Oh, you go, Sarah. Okay. You talk about praying for your enemy or that one. I think it brings more peace about yourself and your relationship to God. Uh, hopefully, the prayer will, that person will be transformed or whatever. Right. But uh, directly, it helps bring peace to yourself and your relationship to God. Right. And that's that. My whole spirit. It does. It does. So trying to, uh, if you've been hurt, trying to um, follow Jesus' ways brings more healing than the, the eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Right. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you for being, um, sharing and, you know, with us and trusting us with, with those with those thoughts. And uh, it means a lot. John. Um, thank you. Well, and with Thanksgiving coming up, I mean, we can think about our blessings here on earth. But, but to me, when I think about the blessings hitting the just and the unjust, the ultimate goal and gift and reward is heaven. I mean, that's that's the big that's the big thing. And because this earth is not our home, so so yeah, if I have a sunny day, yes, the, the other because I'm also a sinner, but the other folks they're having sunny days too. Uh, so I think the, the big thing to remember is the ultimate gift is heaven, mm -hmm. which is dependent on our choice of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. uh, but right here on earth, it, whether they're choosing Jesus Christ or not, they're, they may be having a good day also. And that's yeah. And God wants, uh, in Revelation, God wants to bring about a new day where there be no more crying and no more pain. Uh, no more violence and um, and so uh, I think uh, yeah I think this I think these are these are teachings meant to help us get through this life as uh, and to teach us um, help us get through this life and uh, and that goes for the Old Testament too um, so um, good Taylor hold well, just one second Sorry. Go ahead, uh, Pam, go ahead. I was just thinking of Martin Luther King. I mean, you know, yes, as um, we leading us in nonviolence. Violence. Yes, yes. Yes, Fran. I'm, I'm just thankful God didn't tell me I had to like. That you have to like your enemy? <laughs> no, I had to like everybody. Everybody? Jay, Fran yeah. said she's <laughs> thankful that God said she didn't have to neighbor, like everybody. Love those who... I think sometimes it's a lot easier to love someone 
than it is to like them. <laughs> I think I think I you're on to. I don't know whether that makes sense to it's anybody up. or not. Yeah, well, I'm getting a lot of head yeah. nodding. Yeah. He didn't tell me I had to like everybody. Right. He said I have to love everybody. I have to wish them well. Mm -hmm. I have to hope for the best for them. Yeah. I have to pray for them. Yeah. Exactly. I know our children used to say something and I'd say, I love you very much, but right now I don't like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like that. I think you need to. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll hush. That's, no, that's good wisdom. That's, that's really good wisdom. <laughs> You don't have to be in a relationship with those folks. Yeah. One thing that challenges us, one thing that challenges us, though, is the passing of the peace in worship. We don't uh, do a prayer of confession every week, usually just during Lent, um, but we, uh, a prayer of confession um, is where you confess your sins, you ask for forgiveness, and then you pass the peace. If we're really taking the passing of the peace seriously, then we will make peace with our brothers and sisters and our neighbors and, and the, anybody around us that will cross the sanctuary to go make peace with somebody that we're not at peace with. That's, I'm just saying, I'm not, I am, I'm not looking for anybody to go, leap, I'm not looking at who's gonna leap over the pews on Sunday, um, but if we're, look, if we're taking that passing of the peace seriously, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then we really mean we're making peace with you in the name of the Lord Jesus, and that that so that's a step, that's a that's a little better than avoidance. Avoidance is a coping mechanism, but Jesus calls us to peace, uh, so that's that's hard. Jesus calls us to the hard stuff. I, I hate no matter how much we try to get out of it, no matter how much we, <laughs> no matter how, how many ways we look at it, he and he and he leaves you know us with with really hard sayings about about peace about justice and peace here so anyway Tyler, yes ma'am to me especially verse 44 um i think that that is almost to me when jesus is saying this he is saying it to individuals well the whole anybody i guess but he's speaking to individuals your, your relationship to other people and i think about people that have children that have been killed or something by violence and then they'll be interviewed and they'll say I have forgiven this person I think that that's where this is coming from in order for you to survive um, you have to take on that demeanor of Jesus Christ but at the same time Jesus did acknowledge the government I mean, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are I mean, he, so, so we have a government Hopefully that will take care of that. I mean, I think that's one of the ways that parents can say that if something really awful happens to yeah. a loved one, that I can forgive that person. But you know that just they're going to receive some sort of justice yeah. um, in our society. Well. If that were, if they were not going to receive any justice, that would put a whole different slant on this. Uh, it would, yeah. it would allow, uh, to me, it would allow chaos. Because everybody's not going to do this. Yeah. And everybody's yeah. not going to abide by that. So it was a lesson, uh, sort of a micro lesson for you in the macro of society. Yeah. I th and I think Jesus is looking toward a day when the whole world will act like that. Will will abide by a new heaven and a new earth where, where, um, where you know, uh, he was he was giving a sneak preview of where uh, he wants uh, everything to go work to be headed okay um next time guys uh we take a break so next week is thanksgiving week so no no study on tuesday next week and then when we come back we will go to ephesians 2 um and at the start of ephesians 2 is also about loving our enemy and we'll have to just uh look through that and just kind of see see what's going on there um when we come um, when we, and then after that one, we're going to look at Matthew 26 um, and uh, how Jesus uh, talked about peacemaking there. But anyway, next week, uh, take the week off and um, celebrate 
Thanksgiving with family and friends. And What's the date of the next time we come? Do you have that? Two weeks from today, November 30th. Okay. November 30th. So, um, grace and peace. Let's uh, close with, with prayer, okay? Thank you, God, for this time and for this group, and thank you for your word. It really challenges us beyond our abilities. Um, it, it, your word uh, is, is holy and blessed, and, and we treasure it, um, and, uh, and yet it, it, we treasure it partly because it challenges us. And uh, help us to uh, abide by these precepts. Uh, help us to, um, to love our neighbors as ourselves and to uh, be peacemakers uh, in this world. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's good.